So, you finally decided to do one of two pieces of content in the game worth doing. About time. There is only one problem, all right? It's that you're bad, okay? It took you 14 attempts to get a fire cape. You have never once survived an entire mutadile room, and you've never dodged a crystal in your life. But fear not, my friends, because I believe that anybody can do the Inferno with enough time and effort spent understanding the mechanics. With that said, this is the idiot's guide, okay? You're bad at the game. I am going to dumb things down as much as possible. I am going to get you from wave 9 to wave 69. That's not a sex joke. That's the wave that Zuck is on, 69, so. Anyway, step number one. We have to buy $300 in Bitcoin, an anonymous and decentralized currency untraceable by any government or corporate entity. Step number two, we're going to have to go to parsec.app and... Kidding, don't... Don't do that, please. Anyway, uh, there's a few sections we have to cover before we hop into what is the equivalent of RuneScape, Cock, and Ball Torture. First things first, what stats do I recommend? 99. In everything. Seriously. Good, we've got that covered. So, now we're gonna have to look at some gear setups. Now, realistically speaking, a cape is a cape, right? If you get a cape with just this year, it's no less a cape than Jolanine's world record run. But, if you get a cape with just this year, you should probably wear a helmet when you leave the house because you're a danger to yourself. Being honest here, just this year doesn't really help. If anything, it makes you a little bit sloppier, and I, I promise you, if you can't do the Inferno without just this year, you can't do the Inferno with just this year. With that said, okay, uh, I'm going to show you the max setup for a first time cape, as well as down to what I would say is reasonably the most budget gear that I'm gonna recommend. Now, you might be thinking, oh, if I sell the T-Bow for an armor crossbow, right, uh, I can afford all of the rest of the max gear. But remember, okay, adversity scares you. You are looking for every single reason that you can find to delay the Inferno grind, so. Save up for a Tebow. If you really want to milk it, you can actually save up for an LE2. Highly recommend, uh, but it's up to you, of course. Anyway, now that we've got this figured out, let's look at the inventory setups. This is what you're bringing. Don't argue, all right? SGS is, is not worth it. Bring in the Eldritch Staff if you want to bring anything, but unless you have a six hour cape planned, uh, camping specs is a complete waste of time. I promise you that. It's better you just die and learn the mechanics and go back in. It's gonna make for a quicker cape overall. And also, the cherry on top, guys, with a better understanding of mechanics, you are in a better position to backseat streamers, your friends, YouTubers, working on the Inferno cape. It's a big plus, I recommend it. Now, last but not least, before we jump into the waves, we have to talk about the monsters. Now, this is kind of a doozy because there are a lot and they're pretty complicated, uh, especially when they start appearing together. Now, the structure is identical to the fight caves where a new mob is added every single wave and when you have a two of the same mob they will form together and become the next higher level mob in the next wave the exception is our very first monster which is the nibbler now three of these bad boys spawn every wave and randomly pick a pillar to nibble on which by the way this is a map of the inferno this north pillar here is your home now right you're gonna start every wave here but Sometimes the nibblers will spawn in a perfect little clump uh, and you'll get a perfect freeze and they'll die immediately. You're going to look for like a 152 XP drop or something like that. That means you killed them all. Uh, if you play with split XP drops, you do not deserve an infernal cape, so do the math yourself. Other times, however, they're going to spawn all apart and ruin your life just like Jessica did. Uh, and then you're going to have to go chasing them like the crackhead that chased me at the gas station that one time. Anyway, these things are pretty important because managing pillar health is a staple of learning the Inferno. So, get comfy with these things. Next up is the Bat. Now, these little shits are pretty annoying because they attack on a three tick cycle where every other mob attacks on four or six. Don't know what a tick is. You're completely fucked if that's the case. This entire encounter relies on a deep knowledge of ticks. Go watch a Purple God video. Uh, I'll link some down in the description. They're really, really helpful. Learn everything and then come back here once you're ready, you fucking noob. Anyway, these drain your stats and they can do a decent bit of damage, but as a learner, I promise you these are the least of your worries. Um, if you're a speedrunner, they're the most of your worries, okay? These things suck. Now, the next mob is probably the most important mob 
for uh, learners to learn, and that is the infamous blob. This thing is funky as shit, uh, and is always the hardest for newcomers to the Inferno, but mastering these is really key to beating the Inferno. Once you get these down, completion is seriously inevitable. But to do that, you first have to learn how they work. Now, they operate on a six tick cycle. So the first tick they see you, they read your prayer, then two ticks of wait time. On the fourth tick, they attack with the opposite style. So if they read range, they attack with mage. Then there's another two ticks after that, and the cycle starts over. So it's read, wait, wait, attack, wait, wait. Just over and over again. Now, by themselves, they're not really not terrible. The, the trouble really starts to come when they're paired up with any of the other mobs that attack on four tick cycles, and you have to understand what the hell to do then. We will get into that. When these things die, they split into three small blobs that attack with melee, range, and mage. Uh, they kind of suck, right? But they have 15 HP, and they're not wickedly accurate, so they're pretty quick to kill. Now, next on the list is the meleeer. This thing is pretty sneaky, right? It puts some definite pressure on you in later waves. Obviously, he attacks with melee. He can be safe spotted pretty easily. Uh, but if he hasn't been able to attack you for 30 seconds, he will dig to your location. It usually happens right when your Tebow starts to noodle on the major. He can hit up to 40 or so, but he is relatively inaccurate. So don't feel too bad if you have to tank a, a couple champions from this boy. Now, next up is the Ranger. He just ranges. He's pretty chill. Last four Jads and Zuck is the Major. Now, he attacks every four ticks, just like the Ranger. Uh, but if you are in line of sight of this guy, he has the ability to respawn any of the mobs that you have killed in this wave. That is why you see a lot of the really high-level Inferno speedrunners do all this weird pathing and off-ticking shit. Uh, to kill the Major first, it makes it much faster. But... All right, as the world's most entitled and worst Inferno completer, I say fuck that. Solve the wave as easily as possible, right? And use the glue eater methods to kill the mobs as they come, right? I don't care if the major respawns every single mob in the wave, right? You're gonna sit behind that pillar for as long as it takes and get to the next wave. Now the final monsters are Jads and Zuck. Now you should know Jad and we're gonna get into Zuck when the time comes. Now, full disclosure, this is not like a, a real Inferno guide. If you want someone who knows what they're doing, go watch Exact. He actually makes good content. Um, I am an admittedly average player with a superiority complex and I'm just gonna give you some of the tips that helped me get a cape and a sense of superiority. Let's talk about the early waves here. So this is gonna sound newbie and flame me if you want, but turn on the rune light metronome this thing is really really helpful for learning the patterns and the timings that you're going to need it makes prayer flicking pretty much free uh it tells you if the world you're on is dog shit too so that's that's helpful i actually got my first three capes with this don't don't tell anyone um but i eventually had to rip the band-aid off however if you just want one cape guys no one has to know now number two prayer flicking Privileging is pretty integral, but it's not as important as people think. What I like to do is I will spend as much of the early waves flicking as aggressively as possible. That way I'll have a bunch of supplies going into the later waves and I can just hard camp prayers and eat if I need to. Which brings me to point number three. Use your fucking supplies, dude. Seriously, my god. The only reason you should ever be sitting behind a pillar and waiting for your health or your spec to regen is if you have amaranth up on the other screen and it's hot tub night hell yeah please just click yellow um by the way this does not apply to me uh, i would rather die than brew but you do not have a cape all right so you have to click yellow my friend now on to the later waves this tile right here is where you're going to start most of the waves. However, when you get to wave 50 plus, uh, first off, I recommend you start with Augury, and second, I recommend you start on this tile right here, which is called the Kelvino tile, right? It blocks everything south of you, so it's just slightly safer. Shout out Kelvino. At this point, you are also going to have to start solving waves. So, what is a solve? Well, a solved wave is when you have successfully killed every immediate danger around you, uh, and the mobs are then stacked up behind the pillar, posing no immediate threat. Now, I'm going to give you some common solves and tips that even fire capers can understand. This should be enough to brute force your way to Zuck. 
Now, number one is a major and a ranger stacked up behind each other. Now, this is extremely common. You're going to see this on pretty much every run. Uh, what you want to do is stand in the middle of the north side of your pillar, right? Not on either edge and click the back monster while praying against the back monster. This is going to drag you out. He is going to be the first one to see you. Okay, if it's the ranger, say you're going to be praying range. As soon as you see his attack animation start, you switch to mage and they are now successfully one tick apart. Uh, you can keep alternating or you can just go back behind the pillar and start the method over again uh, for like the super safe way to do it. Uh, but yeah, that you're going to want to get good at that. That is very important. Another good tip is for when the nibblers go to the north pillar, aka your pillar, what you're going to want to do is go to this tile right here. This is going to allow you to blood barrage the nibblers attacking the pillar without anything on the south side being able to attack you. You're going to use this every time. This is a very important square. Remember that square. Another important tip is safe spotting the melees. Now, one important thing to realize is that enemies must always move east and west before they move north and south. So this is important because it helps you safe spot the melees. There's a neat little trick, right? When you're on the north side, you can catch them on the corner like this up to three tiles north as they will always be blocked going east-west by the pillar. Uh, you can do this on both sides for what it's worth. Now, the last and most complicated thing I will go over is the two-tick blob flick. This is something that really saved me. And just to be pedantic really, really quick, uh, the term flick refers to turning your prayers on and off to preserve prayer points. Changing your prayers based on what is attacking you is literally just changing your prayers. It's not technically flicking, but a lot of people tend to use them interchangeably, so just be aware of what that means. Now, anyway, if you have a ranger and a major one tick apart, you can just flick back and forth every tick, and that will automatically solve the blobs. You don't have to worry about it. But if the ranger and major are two ticks apart, or if it's just a blob and another NPC, I would recommend using the two tick blob flick. You don't even have to technically flick here like we were talking about. You can just leave the prayer on for two ticks and then change to the next prayer, ad infinitum. Um, however, it is nice to have the option. So here is how to do the flick. Say mage is attacking first, right? That first tick, you're gonna wanna have mage on. The second tick, you are going to double click mage. The third tick, you're gonna click range. The fourth tick, you're going to double click range. So pretty easy, just mage, 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 range, 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 like that. Fairly simple, saves uh, actually a lot of prayer points and is really, really nice for solving some of the later waves. It is fairly easy in theory, but learning how and when to implement it does get a little bit tricky, right? If the blob reads your prayer at a weird time, uh, truthfully speaking, you might not block all of the damage, but learning what's happening and how to adjust that mid-wave is slightly beyond the sky and honestly not anywhere near necessary to get your first infernal cape that will come with time. Okay, that is the end of the information dump here. All of these tips by themselves are pretty important to understand and fairly easy, but when you start to implement them all at once, that's when things tend to get really tricky. Realistically speaking, you are going to be hitting your head against a wall here, right? You're gonna be PBing on wave 63, and then you're gonna die in the 40s the next five attempts, right? It is gonna be extremely frustrating. You're gonna be dejected, right? You're not gonna have fun. But you know what I always say, right? Yeah, I don't play games to have fun. I play to win and to get angry. And this will let you do both. I do promise though, once you get past wave 63, it only gets easier, right? People tend to struggle with different things, but a large majority of people do struggle with the waves. Jads and Zuck are mechanically nowhere near as hard, but they are a lot of pressure. So just remember that. Speaking of, let's go over Jads and Zuck. Now, I do have some good news, Jad, it's easy, it's just JAD. Triple JADs, also easy. Much easier than you think, right? You have nearly two whole seconds to react to the JAD changing prayers. If you can get to this point, guys, you can do that. Okay, you can, I promise you can do that. Zuck is where the real sweat begins, right? Uh, important information, okay? When you get to Zuck, he breaks out of his prison and this little dinky shield basically just pops out and you have to stay behind that the entire time. You're gonna be attacking Zuck from these safe spot tiles for the majority of the fight, right? Don't attack anywhere else unless you're good, which you're not, okay? You can throw in a shot maybe in the middle, that's fairly safe, but do not get fancy in the corners, my friends. 
All right, look here. These are the dead zones, which if you click on Zuck, these can kill you, right? They're gonna drag you until you're out of the dead zone. So if you are not careful with these, especially after healers, this could very easily lead to you tanking a Zuck hit. So we have to talk about the Zuck timeline, right? Here it is. Zuck will spawn with 1200 HP. A set of rangers and majors will spawn every three minutes and 30 seconds, with the exception of the very first set, which appears after one full shield rotation. These boys, right, they're gonna attack the shield until you tag them off. If they kill the shield, you're dead. So make sure to deal with these properly, right? Now, most main accounts with decent supplies will just prey mage and tank the ranger until they kill it. Now, when Zuck reaches 600 HP, the timer for the sets is paused. So the main strat here is you're going to kill the ranger, right? And then you're going to let the major attack you with mage prey up and just get Zuck below 600 HP. So that pauses the timer. Then at that point, you can feel free to kill the major, gather your wits about you. And then at 480 HP, Zuck will spawn the Jad, right? And once the Jad spawns, one minute and 45 seconds is added on to that set timer. So whatever it was paused at, add basically another minute 45. Uh, and then it continues ticking down. So this is slightly daunting, but with a Tebow or even an ACB, honestly, you should be really clear to kill this uh, before the next set spawns. A lot of people have a friend with a timer so they know when the next set will spawn, but uh, if the kill has gone a little bit slowly, most people will wait for a second set after Jad, uh, deal with them similarly to the first, and then when that's done with, they'll go on to healers. So, uh, if you've got a good few minutes before your next set, you could probably just proc the healers now, right? They spawn at 240 HP and shit gets real here. This is when Zuck is actually difficult. Zuck starts attacking faster, right? So those safe spots, they don't work anymore, right? Sometimes they'll work, but not guaranteed. So don't, don't depend on it, right? Make sure you proc the healers when you are in a corner or just starting to leave. You need to tag every healer as quick as possible because they heal Zuck a lot, which will lead to more sets and more chaos and more supplies used. And when you successfully dispatch the healers, the race is nearing the finish line, my friends. You're gonna wanna stay potted, right? Stamped, heal up, make sure you're range potted and be extremely careful of dead zones at this point. They've killed me 10 times at Zuck, I promise you. If you've waited for a second set before the healers, you might be able to kill Zuck uh, before a third set spawns. If you didn't, it's likely they're gonna come out pretty soon. If you have insane DPS, you might only get one set, which is pretty common on task with the Tebow, but be prepared, play it safe. All right, use the fundamentals, boys. Follow all of these steps, and guess what? You now have an Infernal Cape. Maybe, I mean, you're just watching the video, but if this happens to you in real life, you might have an Infernal Cape at this point. It is now mandatory that you wear this while skilling, while bank standing, not to mention PVM, I don't care if you're ranging, fuck darts, wear the Infernal Cape. And okay, you remember all your friends who have fire capes? They're not your friends anymore. Now, at this point, you also have to make a Twitter for your RuneScape account. Uh, make sure you include your total levels, uh, the number of pets you have, and the Twitch channels that you mod for. Trust me, everybody cares. And a great thing, it does not matter that you have 1KC, right? Make sure that you instantly put yourself at the top of the hierarchy and accuse all other 1KCers of buying their cape. Easy as that. Um, I hope this guide has helped everybody. This took a long time of planning, writing, recording. So please leave a like if you have enjoyed it. Drop a comment telling me what guide you wanna see next. Uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you wanna go to heaven and turn on the bell as well. Apparently that matters. Uh, the last person who turned on the bell actually ended up being the CEO of Amazon. That's right, Jeff Bezos. He's only the, the world's richest man because he subscribed to me uh, and, and clicked the bell. Um, anyways, later fam, remember, stay tasty. Don't even think for a second, nigga you might need a moment. You were only given one shot like a buzzer beater but you stoned it. Break house, break house. Break house, break house. Living breaks at the studio. Here's a break on the house. Here's a break on the house. Yeah, you know they're coming quick. Just like swatting the drug bus, but I'm slick, bitch. Call me Rick.